Hello, everyone. Um, hopefully you all signed up. I think we're at uh, halfway mark or a little over halfway mark of the people signed up. So we're going to get started because as these things get delayed and, and we don't want to start too late. Um, so I'll just start by introducing myself as Brian Townsend. I'm Vice President for Live North Inc. Uh, we are a Canadian company. We've been operating in Canada for 50 years. Uh, Genesis started out on the aquatic side and then we've grown over the last three or four years. We've grown significantly. Um, we now have an amenities division, we have an athletics division, we have an aquatics division, and our newest division is our di digital di division, which if we're really excited about the digital products that we're offering. Um, we operate across Canada in five different prop provinces from Nova Scotia right through to British Columbia. We have 700, no, and actually we have 1,400 employees, a little over 1,400 employees when you include all of our service and programming and management and sales staff, seven offices across Canada. We manage over 75 facilities across Canada, which range from college facilities, JCCs, manufacturing, corporate towers. We work with a lot of the top name uh, developers. Uh, we've already opened over a dozen facilities out west. Um, I think by the end of next week, we'll have over 20 opened uh, next week. So we're very involved in opening. I know Ross has been working on opening the pools. Uh, we've opened a lot of pools. We manage about over 180 pools in, in Ontario. And then we are, on the athletic side, we are national master distributors for Woodway, Watt Bike, and recently Live Life Fitness uh, brands of company, which includes the Cybex, Life Fitness, Hammer Strength, SciFit, ICG, and even Brunswick. So pretty excited about that. That's a new development you'll start hearing about in the next few, few weeks. So. Um, just going through the, uh, the homework stuff that we have to do. If you have a question, please raise your hand and send it in. There's a, a thing on your screen. You can raise your hand, send it in, and we'll try and get to it during the presentation. And we'll have them up. If it's something easy, we can digitally respond to you. Uh, if not, we'll, we'll address it live while we're doing the presentation. Uh, the information that we're going through here, you can go to the next slide, Bruce. Um, sorry, the information that we're going through here uh, during this presentation, you can find on our website. It's a tab on the top called Recovery Plan. Um, the website's on the bottom of this screen, which is livenorth.com to x slash recovery plan. Um, all the resources that we've been accumulating over the while um, will be on there. We've been active during this whole COVID practice, as you can appreciate our, our amenities people, which Jody's gonna go through and talk to you about uh, we've been active on trying to reopen and, and figuring out the best way to reopen a facility, the safest way, and maintain uh, what we need to do with the government. Uh, our aquatics team have been involved in a lot of the webinars, uh, town hall meetings, uh, making sure we're up to speed with all the current stuff. And obviously on a fitness side, uh, we are part of the coalition for to reopen Ontario fitness clubs. So I've been actively involved with the uh, Fitness Industry Council of Canada. So we'll go to the next screen. Um, so to introduce our panelists and get started, because that's what you're here for, not, not this uh, commercial, I'll just start from right to left. Nabil Amini is, our, Amini is our Director of Aquatics for Live North. He handles our operations, staffing. Tammy Stebbings is our Facility Manager at Absolute Shared Facilities. Uh, it's a facility that we're opening up this week, and we have a video at the end to show you how we're going to present that. Ross Middleton is our Contracts Manager for Live North. He's the one that actually looks after your pools and looks after everything you, you need. Uh, we have a staff of customer service and, and uh, customer relations uh, managers that work with Ross to make sure everybody's happy. And our rock star today is Jody Anderson, who is the Fitness and Wellness Program Director at Fanshawe College. Uh, that's a facility that Live North manages. And uh, Jody was uh, key in putting this presentation together and presenting it to uh, the colleges across Canada. And we've had a lot of great responses. So from that, I'll just pass it over to Jody and you can take it from there. Sorry, I'm taking myself off mute. Off of mute. Um, so uh, thanks, uh, Brian, and welcome everybody to our presentation. Um, as Brian said, we were working on this presentation, and it was mainly to address the fitness facilities and colleges and universities across Canada. And this was a presentation that I delivered um, across uh, to the colleges and universities. And uh, we quickly realized that this is 
this presentation applies to many other facilities and reopening plans that people may be going through. So um, we develop sort of the best practices and considerations and things you need to think about when you're opening your facilities. And uh, we recognize that this is just a draft plan, of course, and um, we will amend it and we have been making changes to it as we go, uh, as, as we learn more from government requirements and timing and, um, and making sure that we're, um, you know, giving you the best sort of uh, information for opening your facilities. So the key reopening strategies to consider when you're thinking about uh, opening your facility or when it gets to that point is of course protecting the health and safety of all of your members, your staff and residents that may be living um, in your buildings. Uh, you want to ensure that you're exceeding all the provincial and government health guidelines for the safety and reopening operations and um, member retention. So you want to restart uh, those revenue generating, getting those membership dues as soon as possible and uh, keeping your, your staff, the retention of your staff, because as time goes on and staff is not coming back and you're not being able to bring them back as facilities are not reopening, uh, they're starting to look at other places for jobs. So um, trying to retain that staff and keeping them engaged through the whole process as well. And of course, remain relevant and competitive during this whole time and making sure that you're keeping up with the times. So next slide, Bruce. So in the reopening, um, during each phase of your reopening, there's some key things that you need to consider and think about in each phase. So first of all, you want to consider the member access into your facilities and the amenities that you're going to provide to them during that time. So again, always thinking about that in every phase of your opening plan, the member capacity so, or the load in your pool, how many people are going to be allowed to be in the pool, how many people are going to be allowed to be in your facility, the programs and services that you're going to offer during that time. So each phase those programs and services are going to change. So you're, you may open and have limited services. And then as you continue on in each phase, you're going to offer more services, cleaning, sanitization, and personal protective equipment. So making sure that you're always staying on top of the cleaning and sanitization, our masks needing to be worn, gloves, and so on. Signage, making sure it's very clear for your members and people coming, your users of your facility, Fitness floor equipment, making sure you're staying on top of that, what equipment's going to be used, how that's going to be cleaned. Staff training, because there's always going to be um, something new that is going to come up during each phase. So making sure you're training that staff and what staffing you're going to need. Uh, because initially when you open, you may not need all of your staff and then you'll be phasing that in as well. And then of course, the communication to everybody. So making sure that uh, you're communicating always through every phase what's going to happen. Next uh, slide, Bruce. So the approach we took for the reopening guidelines is um, four different sort of approach or phases. And there's the planning phase, then there's the preparation phase before you reopen, then of course the implementation of all of those plans and preparations that you've made, and then evaluating it afterwards, just to make sure that everything that you, all the plans you put into place um, are working because as we know, the the best laid plans never go the way that you want them to and everything may look great on paper and we may have a great plan but once we're open and we're functioning some of those uh, plans that we've made aren't working so we need to reevaluate constantly next slide bruce so in the planning stage stages it's really important to have your board the board of your condo corporation on board uh, with everything and um, and your staff engagement making sure your staff is engaged the whole time and they're a part of that planning process so keeping everybody involved is really going to help with that planning stage and keep them all um, re and retaining them and building that confidence that you are you know what you're doing residents and staff communication so making sure that you're communicating to your staff always in every phase and the residents so that they know what's going on uh, programming and your approach so what um what are you going to offer during the time so you're are you going to reopen with limited services uh, or are you going to not have certain services in the beginning that were popular and phase those in as the guidelines change from uh, the government 
and a code of conduct. So now there's going to be a new code of conduct in your facility because there's going to be a new way of life and how people are going to operate and uh, use the facility and not just the users of the facility, but the staff as well. They're also going to have a code of conduct and etiquette that they have to follow now and uh, making sure that you're thinking about what is that etiquette and the code of conduct that they're going to have to follow. Are they going to have to go through this, the same screening processes as the uh, users of your facility? They're going to wear masks, gloves. When are they going to wear those uh, protective, that, that protective equipment? And of course, waivers and consent forms. So this is something that is highly recommended um, because you would maybe have waivers and consent forms prior to this anyways, going into your facilities. Uh, but now there's going to be some changes. Now, now there's going to be some changes to those waivers and consent forms and um, all the questions that are going to be involved with that. And um, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. Next slide. Good. Um, so preparing. So of course you have to look at your facility and the layout and your floor plans. What is it going to look like now? How are you going to enter this facility? How are they going to enter the pool? Mapping that out, doing a nice walkthrough and uh, looking, looking through the eyes of your users and not through your, your eyes. So making sure that everything's clear, where are things going to go? What directions are they going to uh, be moving in? Your equipment layout, um, that's going to change drastically depending on the size of your facility, you may have um, enough room to just move your equipment so that they're two meters apart and um, making sure that you have that in front of your machines as well. But if your facility is small, then you have to look at something a little different. And uh, I think we know an equipment company that can help you out with that a little later on. We'll talk about that. Brian will let you know. Um, so we have uh, order your supplies as well. So the cleaning supplies that you're going to need, your masks, your gloves, uh, they're in high demand right now and stocks are, are low across the board. So if you are able to order your supplies, it's a good idea to think about what supplies you're going to need now and cleaning products. And again, we'll give you some ideas later on in the presentation of some products that you can um, order and uh, make sure you get enough of them. So at least a three month supply in the beginning so that you have enough to cover you into your first phase of opening. Sanitizing of your facility. So making sure you have a plan for that and preparing for it. Do you have a company to come in and sanitize your pool and sanitize your equipment? Do you have um, an equipment company to come in and look at your equipment and maintenance? So looking at all of those factors. And um, really important, a uh, booking procedure. So some facilities don't have a booking procedure for someone because it's just come in and use at your own free will. It's a drop-in, so, um, so to speak, uh, situation. But now in order to control the capacity of people coming into your facilities, you really need to look at a booking procedure and what is that going to look like if you don't have one? Because there will be uh, inspectors, there will be on the spot inspections happening where they pop up and they would like to see, you know, what are you doing to maintain your capacity? Are you keeping the physical distancing in your facility? And you have to provide that proof. So you want to make sure that you can stay on top of that. And uh, Nabil will talk about a little bit about um, the scheduler that we have a little later on. And what is the owner's responsibility? So are they responsible for cleaning products, ordering them? What are they responsible for? Just having that initial conversation with the board and the owners and, and what, what is needed in that preparation um, part of your plan. Next slide. So now we've done all of our planning and our preparing and now it's time to implement. So we need to have um, a plan to execute it and your staff can help you with this. If you have some staff members that are great in certain areas, you can um, assign them tasks for those actions and to make those plans to execute them. Do they need to call those equipment companies? Do they need to schedule having people come in to sanitize and um, order the products? Your staff training, so that's going to be very key because it's going to be all new for your staff. Everything that you do now is going to be new opening your facility. The way that you enter the facility, the booking processes, your walk arounds, your checks, everything's going to change. Your facility entry and check-in policies, of course, that's going to change as well. So is there going to be a health screening that you're going to um, introduce? Is there, there's the waiver, is there going to be a waiver that you're going to have them sign prior to coming into the facility 
or when they show up right in front of you filling out that form. Floor marking, so where are you going to get these signs from? Making sure that you're putting, measuring out those two meters in your facility, spacing your equipment out, making sure the lineups, if there's going to be a lineup coming into the facility, where is that spacing going to happen in your exercise area and all areas of your facility. And your locker rooms and shower functions. So the initial uh, recommendation is to close all of your showers and your change rooms and just have uh, your washrooms available, but um, that may not be possible in some areas. So how is that going to work? How are you going to manage that now? And what does that look like? So if, if the locker rooms and the showers are going to be something that you need to have open, now all of the rules and plans that apply to you, the physical space of your exercise area, now those will apply to your locker rooms as well and your showers. So, and, and how is that going to be managed? Who's going to manage that? And how are you going to manage that in your facility? And access to the aquatics area. So this, and um, Ross will talk a little bit more about that later on and he'll give you more information about how that'll look. Um, but again, a lot of your your access points to your aquatics areas are through your locker rooms and your showers. So um, that's, a, that's something to think about. Next slide. And then we come to the evaluation part. So now we've implemented, we're in our facility, we're hope, before we reopen, we can evaluate everything that we've done. We can put it to the test, um, the messaging out to everybody, what is it gonna look like? Uh, do a dry run through of coming into a facility, have somebody come in that's uh, pretending that they're going to be a, a new person walking your facility. How does that look? What questions do they have? Um, and the messaging that you're sending out to everybody, making sure that it's clear, direct emails are great, um, communication to everybody. They're not always going to read it. So how are you going to make sure that they're getting the information that they need? What's your recovery plan? Um, with the pandemic recovery plan, recovery plan. So what if there is a, a post reopening COVID positive um, COVID um, case that comes up in your facility? How are you going to manage that? What is that plan going to be? And how are you going to recover from that? What does that mean for your staff, for the residents, for the users of your facilities? You're going to evaluate the um, need for supplies. So constantly looking at that because you're going to be cleaning more frequently and those supplies are going to dwindle very quickly. So constantly evaluating and making sure you're staying on top of that. And uh, locate your suppliers. Like who are those suppliers going to be? Making sure that they will have the supplies if you need them and uh, putting that all into place prior to. And the last part is you have to determine what the residents or the members or users of your facility, what is their responsibility during all of this? So what is their responsibility when they're coming into the facility and making it very clear to them? Are they required to clean the machines before and after? Are they required to sanitize their hands when they walk in the door? What are, what are they responsible for? Next slide, Bruce. So of course we, we need to talk about the health and safety part because that's a very, that's a, that's a key thing now in, in our facilities, it's always been that way. And especially in sort of the fitness industry, we've always stayed on top of health and safety of our members and cleaning, but now it's just, we're taking it to that next level. So looking at the products that you're gonna use to clean those machines, the wipes, the disinfectant sprays, a lot of times uh, people have their own bottle that they're carrying around and Bruce, or sorry, Brian will talk about that a little later on. Hand sanitizer stations, where are they going to be? How many are you gonna have available? Making sure you have enough available. Are your staff gonna be wearing masks all the time? Are they gonna be, are the people using your facilities gonna be wearing masks? And what does that look like? Are you providing them? Do they need to bring their own masks? So these are all things you need to think about with the health and safety piece. And how are you going to manage those change rooms? I talked about that a little earlier. How are you going to how are you going to limit those spaces? How are you going to manage that? If there's only a certain number of people that are allowed in the shower area, how are you going to ensure that only five people are in the shower area when they're supposed to be, or in the locker rooms? What does that process look like? And what can you put in place to make it easier for your users and your residents? to stay on top of cleaning practices and making sure that they're, they're doing their part. So we all know if we make it a very 
hard process and it's uh, very labor intensive, they're unlikely to do it. But if all of the products are there, it's very easy. It's simply grabbing a wipe, wiping down the machine, or they have their own spray bottle with disinfectant. What can you do to make that, that easier, that practice easier for them? And again, we'll come back to this point a couple of times in this presentation because it's really important to think about what is your policy and detailed plan should a COVID-19 uh, case pop up post reopening? Because it is a possibility. And what is that going to look like and how are you going to communicate it? Next slide, Bruce. So space allocation, Brian will go through this and so will Ross in his, present, his part that he's going to talk about. But looking at your floor plans and moving of equipment, do you have to move equipment? Where, what does that look like? What's the spacing? Does equipment have to be removed if your facility isn't large enough to accommodate the two meters apart between equipment? Uh, what's the direction of travel gonna look like? The floor markings, you wanna make sure that you're, um, it's one-way traffic. You know, people are coming in one way and exiting in another way and trying to limit crossing paths as much as possible within your facility. One popular thing that's starting to happen that we're seeing in the industry is workout pods and the spacing. So a lot of facilities are switching to creating little workout pods in spaces where they have pieces of equipment um, and a cardio piece of equipment where someone can book just that little pod and work out in it and then they they can, it's easily sanitized after. They can book it out for 45 minutes for an hour. They can get a, all the workout that they need. So those are becoming very popular and people are talking about the workout pods quite a bit. And of course, determine your maximum loads for your fitness floors, your pools, and your barbecuing areas and any common areas where people will gather. What does that load look like? And again, how are you gonna manage that? What does that look like? Do you have the staffing to do so? and uh, marking the pool decks for distancing. And Ross will just, he'll touch on that a little bit in his section. Another thing to think about is amenity. So in a lot of facilities, uh, they provide hair dryers, hair straighteners, shampoo, soap, towels, all of the amenities you would need to have in your change rooms. So removing those, that is um, any high touch items you wanna remove from your facilities. And that's the recommendation and encouraging your users to bring their own bring your own towel, especially in, in um, condos, you can change in your own, uh, your own uh, unit and bring your own towels and, your, and go back and change there and uh, blow dry your hair and do what you need to in your, in your, uh, your own unit. So it's, it's better just to remove these items to, to reduce the risk of the high touch items. Next slide. So again, your policies and procedures are going to change, of course. And what do those policies, the cleaning policies and measures look like? How frequently are you going to clean those machines? Uh, do you have, is it your staff that's going to be responsible for it? Do you have a company that's going to deep clean and sanitize? Are there going to be different schedules in your facility? Are you going to close down for certain periods of time during the day so you can do a deep sanitization? Is that going to be a requirement? New policies for members to follow. So, you know, cleaning those machines before and after use for their own safety. That's a, that's a key thing. And communicating that to the members, making sure that they know there's the increased health and safety precautions that you're taking and that you're doing all of this um, to make sure that they're safe. And consider policies regarding the number of members allowed in the facility. So, those will be sort of directed through uh, the provincial guidelines and the government will let you know sort of what, what are those guidelines that you have to follow, but making sure you know how you're going to manage that. And again, the scheduler that Nabil will talk about will, will aid you in that. What, again, here it is again, what happens if a COVID-19 case occurs post reopening? So we're always going to touch on that. So it's a, it's a key point to think about. Next slide. And the big part is communication. So what we've been finding a lot, um, some of our facilities out west that we manage, they're already in the reopening stage. They're into it about uh, two weeks, one to two weeks now. I believe nine of the facilities uh, just reopened yesterday. So we've been learning a lot from them going through this process 
And the one thing that they have said is the communication is key. And no matter how you try to communicate direct, they've uh, taken into consideration all means of, of communication, direct emails, posting signs, uh, sending out on social media. And there's still those people that will show up and have no idea what has happened. They're not reading the communication. So maybe the communication that's sent out has to be less text dense and the more pictures, something that's easy, quick for them to understand. And uh, there's some, some signs that we'll show you that uh, we've developed that are really great signs and very clear. And uh, it's very clear when you look at the sign what it means. So maybe some of the email communications need to look like that. But preparing your communication for your members and your staff, making sure it's very clear, they understand uh, your, when your opening dates are, the timelines, what the expectations are for them, make it very clear. And uh, signage in your facilities, make sure you've got the signage in. Again, we'll show you the signage that we have and it's really great and it's been going over really well in our facilities. And there's going to be a video near the end and uh, we'll show you doing a walkthrough video is actually a really great tool. And um, just to show people what does it look like and give them that confidence and show them here's what it looks like right from the moment you walk in the door through the facility. This is the new process now. So they can physically see that and it's visual to them and it gives them a level of comfort before they come back. Because once you reopen, there's going to be a lot of um, users that will be reluctant to come back because they're unsure. They're unsure that you have taken the measures that you need to to open your facility to keep them safe. And that walkthrough video is a great tool to show them that you've done that. Next slide. So now we're going to hand it over to Brian and he's going to talk all about the equipment side of things and considerations that you need to think about. Thank you, Jody. Jody. Jody, just beforehand, we had a question come in about the adequate sanitization of the pool and the change rooms. Uh, pools obviously mandated by government uh, when you actually filter the water, but the sanitization part, uh, maybe give a little feedback to that. It's, it was kind of like, do they clean the change rooms every four hours, every hour, or is there a guideline, or, or what are we doing in some of our facilities? There'll be guidelines, obviously, that will come out of what needs to happen. So as far as the usage of equipment, it's sanitized, obviously, off after every use. So equipment itself, when you're using it, sanitize the change rooms. Um, all of our facilities are doing something a little differently. If they're, if they're using the facility and their change rooms, then there's... Uh, products in the change rooms and facilities for them to sanitize the lockers down themselves after use because they'll have to take some onus but as far as the showers are concerned they need to be they need to be sanitized at least deep cleaned three times in a day and that's kind of what the guideline we're going in addition to what your staff is doing so that's where the showers and the locker rooms that's the tricky point that's that's where the recommendation comes from just keeping them locked like not allowing them to use the showers because it becomes very tricky to know who's been using the showers how often uh, if you leave all the showers open then you have to sanitize all of them and it can become very labor intensive and if you don't have the staff on site to do that or the or a company or the means to do that then it becomes very difficult so if the showers and the change rooms have to be opened then you really need to look at what is the staffing that you have to allow for that sanitization because it will have to be sanitized just like every other part of your facility. I hope that answered your question. I think so. Um, anyway, if there are more questions, uh, just send them on in. Um, talking about the, the fitness room now, the actual fitness room itself, uh, a few things to consider. One is your equipment's been down for three months and some of us are at quarterly maintenance programs anyway, but because it hasn't been used, you need to get or be advised to get a service company in to give it a wipe down, give it a cleaning, uh, just to make sure the lubes, the stuff under your belt uh, is clean, the dust is out of there and everything's accumulated. Um, also, when people come back to a fitness room, they wanna make sure it's clean. Uh, they wanna feel comfortable that you've cleaned and sanitized it the best that, that we can. Some of the ideas that I know we're doing in our facilities is those tattered and torn 15 year old gym mats, throw them out. Um, the little tacky thing, get rid of it because even if you sanitize it, it's not gonna look clean. 
it's not worth it. it we'll talk about that later on. When it comes to distancing your equipment, the rule is the six foot rule. Uh, that applies. And what it's done is on a lot of our facilities, we need to go through and figure out what the most popular equipment is and what equipment we're going to keep in the room because it may not all leave in the room. If you have two, two pieces of uh, two ellipticals and two treadmills and they can't fit in the area, what do you get rid of? The elliptical or the treadmill? So you need to start communicating or at least finding out or, or determining from your members what stays and what goes, what gets unlocked and what gets locked. Um, when you're distancing the equipment, obviously a lot of, of many of the condos, corporate gyms, don't have space to put it. So you'll see that we, we do signage and we'll just unplug every other treadmill or every other elliptical, um, take out the power cord, put a sign on there saying that it's not in use. And then as you go through the next month or two months or whatever, rotate those. Okay. So the same one isn't unplugged the entire time that you're, you're down. Um, you can switch those out, plug the other ones in. So you've kind of moving your pattern around a little bit. So that's that, you know, understand that people need to clean we used to come into the gyms and have a, a spray bottle there and i don't have a sample here but spray wipe down the equipment and most people sat down and wiped down the pads behind you now you've got to make sure the handles are, are wiped down the area in front of you are wiped down if you're breathing on a, a piece of a, a weight stack it's got to be clean because that that's what we're worried about now so uh when you have your spray bottles there I think of one of our facilities, everybody who comes into the gym gets their own spray bottle. So you take it with you before you get on, spray it. When you get off, spray it. It's a great idea. Um, same as the dumbbells and the soft goods. When you're using those, those strength areas, what do you do with them after you've used them? I.e., I know in, in a, a few facilities we've recommended to get rid of your 150, 110, above 100 pound dumbbells and just put them as an empty rack so that once you've used them, you put them onto the empty rack, you spray them down, but at least people know they've on the spent, we have staff to come in and clean them afterwards, but work through how that's gonna happen in your condo gym, um, because things like those dumbbells and, and soft goods, you need to make sure they're cleaned after you use them. The onus is on the people using them, but again, it's your facility and you've got to manage that. Um, you can schedule equipment. Obviously there are some popular uh, pieces of equipment, treadmills and all that. So. Through your scheduling, you may schedule treadmill number one, treadmill number two, and how you do your workouts, again, determine if it's going to be a 45-minute workout, and maybe in, in some of our facilities, we have a 15-minute clean time, same as pools, um, or you just staggering. But you need to do a walkthrough of your gym, look at the opening and closing, and look how many people you think you can fit into that room, um, keep it maintaining your social distancing. One, in a lot of these open spaces, what we do is we have exercise pods, and just map it out, 140 square feet. Put it on the floor, there's your square grid. Work out in that pod, do your stretching, and then leave. And, you know, those are the things you can do in those areas. This chart shows you kind of, kind of this is a really crowded facility, uh, Fanshawe College. I think they've got up to 10,000 students working out here. And you can see on, on the, the, the left side here, um, I'll try and show you my, I guess my cursor is not showing. Uh, but on the left side, you can see those treadmills in the middle of the room. They're about a foot and a half apart. Those ellipticals are about the same. And that's pretty well standard how we go in, in, in most facilities. What we've done in a facility like this and many of our facilities that we work on redesigning is we look at that space plan. And that's the facility to your right. You can see those white circles. Those are our six-foot bubbles or six-foot zones. And now we can space out that equipment knowing that we have six foot in there in between the equipment. We want to make sure we've got more than six foot behind the equipment because obviously you're going to have people come on and come off. So it's one thing to have treadmills six feet apart, but if there's only three feet behind a treadmill to get onto it, you don't have social distancing behind your treadmill. So you got to think about that, right? That's that 140 square foot back there. You can see in this uh, the figure on the right how we've arrowed that. It's going to be arrows on the floor, but where we have the arrows going through. So there is a flow pattern. I'm pointing with my hands, realizing that my cursor is on the screen. So my apologies. I'm used to standing up and having a screen behind me, right? Um, but you can see on that screen how those arrows kind of indicate that pattern. And even if this is a small gym, and we've done a lot with small gyms, where it's okay, you come in, you go to the right, it's your cardio, the back wall may be your, your strength, 
your left wall is going to be your, your free weight area and you leave. And if you just want to come in and do free weights, then you go around the cardio back there and you go over to the free weight section. The same thing applies for everybody. So you have a flow of in and out. Um, and you can see here the, how spaced out that dumbbell area is. It's in the bottom corner. Um, sorry, my cursor is not working. I won't be able to do it. Okay. Uh, in that bottom corner, you can see on the, on the, the left-hand side, how those dumbbell racks are against that wall. That's all mirror along that wall. And we have those weight benches. Actually, there's more weight benches than, than what appears there. And now we've taken them, we've spread them out, put the benches back, moved them around. Uh, even on our Olympic bench, um, two meters apart, Olympic bench is uh, Olympic bar is seven feet. So realize that now you've got somebody at each end of that bar, you know, you need some space in between them as well. So those are the considerations that we go through when we're looking at that, that equipment and how we lay it out and providing adequate zone. Even in that aerobics room we see on this one, obviously there'll be a, a door in and a door out the back. Don't come in the outdoor on some of these larger facilities. So those are the considerations that you need to do. And a lot of the, the condos and smaller facilities, even in our corporate gyms, we have ambassadors. Uh, and those are people that walk around and just keep an eye to make sure everybody's doing the right thing. Um, that's a good idea if you're in a condo situation to get your fitness committee together. So as a group, you can kind of say, here's how we're going to do it. Here's what works. Because not every property manager, every owner is, a, is an expert. And the people using the gym are usually have a pretty good understanding of the flow. And that's a great idea to bring them in and say, guys, how do you want to see this happen? We need this much space. We can only fit this much equipment. Where are we going to go? And do it as a team. And that way, at least you, you get a buy-in and everybody's happy. You clean the equipment, uh, do a thorough cleaning of everything. And when you clean equipment, don't just clean around it. You've got to lift up that treadmill and vacuum under it because there's a lot of dust and lint that, that gets under there. Uh, and that's a smart idea. You may end up moving them. So enough on that. I think you got the idea. It's a matter of spacing and, and taking a measuring tape. The small equipment, you know, most of our facilities, we're saying bring your own. Uh, it just makes sense. Uh, you should take a, a, a lot of these smaller bands and items, even in a big gym before post COVID, a lot of people don't want to use one that somebody else has used and you don't know if it's uh, um, clean or not. So uh, if you've got the space and if you've got the staffing, you can develop a checkout process. You can actually put this at your front desk. If somebody wants to work out with a med ball, go and work out with a med ball, bring it back, make sure it gets clean or sanitized. Um, if you have the ability, to, yeah, yeah. If you do have the ability, sorry, question came in comment. Yeah, you're right. If you can get more than six feet, great. I agree totally, Jody. Um, so those are the considerations to take in your fitness room, and everyone's unique. And I, I know we get a lot of drawings sent into us, and we're working with a few facilities right now to say, okay, what's the best flow for this facility, given your demographics, um, and how are we going to make it work post COVID? So. Um, that's a quick rundown on, on the fitness equipment, I think. We'll move it over to aquatics. Pass it over to Ross Middleton. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, you can go to the next slide, Bruce. The next part of this presentation is going to focus on what to do now that pools are allowed to open. As of June 25th, indoor and outdoor pools are allowed to open provided physical distancing rules are followed. Provided physical distancing rules are followed. That's pretty much the key sentence in all of this. So over the next few slides, we're gonna go over this and what you can do to be properly prepared. Opening your pool. How do we actually go about opening our pools? Well, the majority of the pools uh, that we maintain, they've remained filled and running with regular maintenance for the past couple of months. Uh, if you're in that situation, all you really need to do is a quick walkthrough of your mechanical room, have a look for anything obvious, anything that may have cropped up. Um, and that's really all it's required from a mechanical point of view. Now, if you've gone ahead and, and drained your pool or possibly stopped your maintenance, you just wanna go ahead and call your service provider, get them out there right away, start that pool filling, get them back on a maintenance plan, get that pool clean and clear, so it's gonna be ready for an inspection. Last thing you wanna do is have your cleaning team 
go through the area, clean the deck, clean the windows, everything spick and span again. Now for all these pools that have been closed for such a long time, you do require a new health inspection before you can open the pool back up. You have to get these inspections in and done 14 days before you want to open your pool. Now, depending on where you are, in the GTA, for example, it's simply an online form that you fill out. Once that form is filled out, you don't need a physical inspection from a health inspector. You just have to have that form filled out. Uh, if you're in Hamilton, for example, you have to physically have a health inspector into your site to physically inspect the pool before you can open back up. Uh, now this slide, this one's mainly aimed, aimed at the outdoor pools. Uh, outdoor pools, it's been pretty much business as usual uh, for us anyways. We've been opening pools for the past couple of months, draining, cleaning, getting them up and going. Uh, regardless of what was going to happen, couldn't really leave an outdoor pool full of stagnant water. Uh, so we've been draining, cleaning, getting all those guys going regardless. Uh, the big difference in that one is, and this is for indoors as well, spas and whirlpools are to remain empty and clean until further notice. So any hot tubs you have on your site, they can't open yet. They, they're still staying closed. Uh, next slide, Bruce. Amended guidelines from the Canadian Life Saving Society. Now these are amended rules a little bit. Uh, a lot of the Life Saving Society rules are aimed at big class A pools, city pools. We're mainly discussing class B or condominium pools here, so they're slightly amended. Uh, the measuring and the floor markings, I think Jody discussed a lot of that stuff already. That's gonna be the same for your pool. Uh, proper spacing or removal of pool furniture. Life Saving Society recommends proper spacing or removal. We're saying go ahead, get all that pool furniture off of the pool deck. With um, limited timed appointments, which we'll talk about a little bit later, you wanna get people coming down, swimming, using the pool, in the water, and get them out of there so the next group can get in. Now, having said that, you know your buildings much better than we do. Maybe you have to have some furniture out there for people to put their shoes on so they can come and go. I don't know, you consider putting in a straight back wooden chair that's not very comfortable. Maybe get people in, get them out quick. It's a thought. Next slide, Bruce. Timed appointments and reduced bather loads. So timed appointments are timed entries. Uh, this is a really big one to consider. Uh, it allows you to add a bit of a buffer between your swim times. So you can add a 10 or 15 minute buffer. Uh, swims can go from 10 to 10.45 and then the next group starts at 11. That gives you a little bit of time between groups so people aren't coming and going through the same entry. Uh, it gives your pool attendant or your building staff a little bit of time between groups to wipe down high touch areas. They can wipe down ladders, railings, etc. cetera. Uh, it also helps prevent very big lineups outside of your pool gate. So you don't have residents standing out in the sun, lining up outside. Um, the other big one that I think is a great one, if I've signed up yesterday for a swim from 10 to 10.45, and that whistle blows at 10.45, I know it's time to leave. I'm just gonna leave. Next group comes in at 11, you're good to go. And a big one is contact tracing. Uh, Jody mentioned this a few times. If something were to happen, you can go back in time very easily See who was in the pool with that person, who was there before them, and who was there after them. Contract tracing with timed appointments. The other three points here, I think Jody already discussed, a lot of this stuff flips over from the gyms to the pools, change room showers, it's all very similar, so we'll, uh, we'll skip over. Increased supervision. Uh, there's still one more back in the previous slide there, Bruce. Increased supervision. How are you monitoring your bather load and swim times? What we're seeing is a lot of buildings are hiring lifeguards or pool attendants that didn't have them in the past. That way they can be monitoring how many people are coming into the pool, keeping the numbers down uh, around 10. Uh, with these new guidelines, the reduced bather loads, Life Saving Society is recommending about 25 to 50% of your bather load. So for most sites, that's gonna be somewhere around 10. 
Of course, if you have a bigger pool, there might be a little bit more, a smaller pool, a little bit less, but generally that number is around 10. With an attendant out on deck, they can be keeping track of those people, letting in the one group, letting them out, calling in the next group, and wiping down equipment between sessions. Uh, something as simple as they can open the gate when the new group comes in and open the gate when they leave. So all the residents and swimmers don't have to touch that gate. Now you've just reduced one major high contact point that no one is touching. Uh, next slide, Bruce. Touchless transactions and signing. Only residents should be using the pool. There's no visitors allowed this season into the pools. So how do we know? How do we know who's swimming in the pool? Uh, again, I'm assuming you have an attendant or a gate attendant or a pool attendant. There need to be a way to show these people without having contact, whether it's um, something like a wrist tag, a keychain, anything similar like that, that pool staff can see at a quick glance, they're a resident here, away they go. Um, signage, you'd be able to talk about signage a little bit more, there's a lot of new signage that acquired. Uh, I think that about wraps it up for me. Uh, any questions, throw them out and we'll try and get to them. Nabil, take it away and thanks for listening. Awesome, thanks Ross. Uh, so obviously with all these new rules and regulations that we're throwing out, um, basically maybe a little bit hard to keep track. Uh, what we recommend is making sure you guys have a reopening checklist or a questionnaire that you're gonna fill out before actually reopening your facility. Uh, the one we have on the screen here is a very simple one that we're using for our class B pools, just so that we have an idea of what rules we're gonna, in place, we're gonna put in place for the residents when they come open the swimming pool. There's also a really good tool for when health instructors come in for the opening of the pool, we can hand them this form and they can kind of see what we've done to kind of you know, have the precautions in place for COVID. Uh, communication to residents. Uh, so basically with all these new regulations, it's really important that we keep everybody informed of all these changes. I know Jody touched on this a lot at the beginning, but it's super important that we, you know, communicate effectively to the residents and let them know how we're getting access to the pool, the new, new rules for booking the pools, how many people are allowed inside the facility, uh, any other rules that you're gonna put in place there. You know, if they're feeling unwell, stay at home, um, the change of the hours of the pool, basically any regulations that you put in place that are different from the previous years. Super important that you get these communications out prior to the pool opening. Uh, and actually periodically throughout the summer seasons to keep people reminded in case there's new people that are using the facility that they're informed about what's going on at the pool. Next slide, Bruce. Uh, so cleaning. So obviously at the facilities, we need to make sure that we're cleaning all the high touch surfaces uh, at least twice a day. And what's really important about that is actually leaving out uh, cleaning supplies for people to clean uh, when they're entering the facility to wash their hands. Uh, what's really important is that there's actually instructions on how to do these things. Having a bottle like this is really good, but if there's no instructions, health inspectors are going to ask, and they want to make sure that people are aware of how to use these products properly. It's also super important that you have products that are approved by Health Canada. There's a specific DIN number that has to be on these products uh, in order to you know, qualify as COVID safe uh, in terms of disinfection. Um, you know, it's really important to also ensure is like cleaning any high touch surfaces or stuff that's used by lifeguards, you know, the throwing aids, life jackets, reaching poles, um, any equipment that may be on the pool deck. What I've been telling people is that, you know, make sure you guys take life jackets away and try to recommend residents to bring in their own filtration devices so that things are not shared amongst other people. And if you do have to leave them on site, that they're also part of the cleaning process. Um, also, you know, reducing pool toys and removing all the pool toys from the pool areas and just leaving flotation devices that's absolutely, absolutely required and making sure you guys are putting that in the cleaning process of the facility. Next slide, Bruce. So these are some of our signages that we provide to our aquatic facilities. Um, we, we can sell them to you guys, you can make your own, but basically they need to have a couple basic things included in them, physical distancing, Make sure you're staying home if you're feeling unwell or you've been in contact with anybody with COVID. Um, and basically, uh, just telling people to wash their hands before they enter the facility. Um, all the inspectors want these posted at the gates and you want people to make sure that they're reading it before they enter uh, the pool. Next slide. Uh, these are some of the other signs that we're putting up at gyms, uh, physical distancing uh, markers on the ground, uh, welcome back uh, signs and basically how to wash hands and how to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Next slide, Bruce. 
Again, some more of the signs that we have for facilities, you know, especially with equipment that's turned off, so people don't turn them back on to use, uh, and social distancing signs as well. So our scheduler, I know we've talked about this a little bit earlier in the presentation, but we've created a scheduling app uh, for our facilities where people can actually download it on a phone or use it on their desktop to book time to use their facility. Uh, this is going to be helpful to eliminate crowding at the pools or lineups at the pools. Um, the app is a cloud-based app, very easy to implement at any building, and basically it's going to prevent, like I said, uh, the crowding and it's going to give opportunities for people to book time to use the facility. Next slide, Bruce. So the app basically provides ability for you guys to set opening times to the pool. So if you want a pool to open at 10 o'clock, the app will show bookings after 10 o'clock going forward. Uh, we can reduce the capacity of each booking. So for each hour or hour and a half, 10 people maximum, you can make it less, you can make it more. Once the time is full, actually no one can register for it, but people can register for waiting times. Um, you, can, you can also do, um, you can also basically give it out to people via, via app or on a website. Next slide. So this is how we actually, you know, integrate our app. Uh, we give you guys a URL and you distribute it amongst your residents. And what they do is they put their name, last name, email, password. And part of that is location code, which we give out to you guys to distribute so that we know that the people using the app is part of your building. So once they fill this out, they'll have a login and we'll actually give you the <clears throat> URL for the app. So next slide. So once the people are in this app, they can see the times on the left, the pool location, and basically the capacity and the available space for each time slot. On the right side, you can see the duration and how long you can actually swim for. Next slide. So this app is actually a branch of our, our, our LiveX app, which is a, basically a full facility management program tool where people can actually access workout videos, room bookings, schedule personal training, uh, and basically manage a whole facility from start to finish. Um, and that's basically it. I'll pass it on to Jody. Nabil, before you, uh, you go on, a question came in. Uh, if sure. someone does not have a smart device or a computer, how are they going to schedule through this app? So what we've been saying is people can actually register through security or concierge. Uh, they can have a login and people can call in or actually go to the front desk and they'll be able to register uh, via the security or the concierge. Okay, so as uh, Nabil mentioned, uh, LiveX is uh, sort of, um, so the schedule is part of a larger platform that we have, which is LiveX, and LiveX is the platform that we use in our facilities uh, that we manage. So the facilities that we manage, we have LiveX, and that is, that is basically the platform that we use for facility management and all of our programming and all of that all that we offer in the facility is through LiveX. So it again, it has our workout videos, room booking, scheduler, personal training sessions. Um, and now, um, so if you can go to the next slide, Bruce, we have our virtual programming that, uh, which is Optimal. It's our platform that is a value add to our clients and it's an add-on to the LiveX. Uh, portion that we have right now. So what we've learned from COVID and everybody working from home and remotely and everything being shut down and basically our industry and the fitness industry has been shut down. Virtual programming and virtual classes and virtual personal training is here to stay. It's not going to leave. People enjoy it. It's become part of uh, what we do. It's become part of our life. So we're finding that in the reopening stages and what we're recommending uh, to a lot of our clients that we work with and the facilities that we manage is a hybrid sort of programming system. So now there's going to be some on-site programming that you're going to offer with the addition of virtual programming. And that's probably going to be standard across the board in a lot of facilities. Uh, but what we've done with uh, LiveX is we've added Optimal and that's a value add. You can go to the next slide, Bruce. And that's basically uh, the virtual portion of it, the remote training and uh, being able to offer that service. So now, the facilities that we manage, uh, the members and users of our facility, as they would book to uh, re reserve a spot in a class if they were going to be working out in a certain exercise class, 
now they can reserve uh, their spot and just go right in and do and join that class virtually. And they can also have uh, personal training sessions as well. So it's a it's a great tool that's that's been added to um, the platform. Next slide, please. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's my dog. We'll pass it on to Brian. He'll talk about uh, the Live Lake Express. I didn't uh, cut in quick enough on that. So we, <laughs> we even rehearsed this and said, let's shut the dog up. So uh, Live Express is just a quick, it's a commercial. Um, we've been using this in our facilities. We, uh, I think we have it in over 20 facilities. And it's really just a, a press and express type thing. Happy face, middle face, sad face. I don't know what's on the next slide. And it allows you to, to basically map the customer's journey through. So if somebody's in your work, and it's really good post-COVID because if somebody's in your facility and they're not feeling comfortable, they can go and just press the yellow. It's not press anymore because you, it's all virtual now. You just hover over the red button or hover over the yellow or the green, or you use your smartphone or anything like that, and you can uh, scan the QR code. I think you'll see it in the back of the uh, banner by Nabil. Um, and this allows you to put it at different states. So we use it in our pools uh, because we want the managers to know, go to the next slide, uh, real time what's happening in the facility. And this is the type of graph that you have come up on your computer every day. Uh, if you had three of these stations, one in the fitness room, one in the pool, and one maybe on the front desk or in the, in the reception area, you'd know what's going on hourly, day by day, it's live, it, it just transcends. So it gives you an idea that I've got a problem. You see red, you've got a problem. If you get a lot of reds, it can be programmed to, to warn you. So it's just that real-time tracking. And we were using it before the pandemic, but now post-pandemic, it gives your members, your owners, your customers, your employees, that extra level of comfort that they can just go, hey, I don't like this, or can you fix this? And you get it live. So. Uh, allows you to think. So that's that little commercial on LibExpress. And you, we got all that information on our website and you can contact us about that. So um, the optics, I'm going to pass back to Jody and, uh, and then we can finish off. Okay, so again, the member optics or your resident optics or the users of your facility. So you want to you want to make sure the, the optics of it is how are they perceiving your facility and the efforts that you have made to keep them safe. So this is gonna lead into the video that we're gonna to talk to you about and show you um, how you can ensure and make sure that they feel safe coming back to the facility. What physical improvements can be done now? So that's some of the things you can be thinking about while the facility is closed, what improvements or changes can you make now to make it a positive experience for the members or the optics to the members to make them feel comfortable coming back to that facility? Is there new equipment? that you can be putting into your facility that uh, makes it, um, you know, more appealing to come back? Is there, you know, are you, can you put plexiglass up in, if you have a reception area, just to make sure there's that barrier between the, the resident and uh, the staff that's there. And um, any cleaning, the signage, your cleaning procedures, making sure that there's pictures of your staff cleaning the equipment, it shows them that your staff are cleaning, aside from actually being in the video. So um, yeah, we'll pass it over. And I think uh, the video's up next, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Do you want to introduce the video or are we just going to play it, Brian? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll just, uh, we'll play the video. I, I think um, Tammy's around somewhere, but it, Absolute Condominiums is a condominium facility in Mississauga. They've got, I think, four or five different condos. If Tammy, you can just introduce this. Absolutely, I can do that. Hello? Let's see if I'm on. Or am I? Yes. Hello, can you see me? Yes, we can see you and hear you. Okay, that's perfect. Hi, fitness enthusiasts. Okay, I'm Tammy Stebbings. I am the manager of Absolute Clubhouse. It is um, a facility with multi-use in three levels that uh, gives to five different condominiums um, their recreation services. So at the moment, we are in the process of opening up the outdoor pool and the indoor pool, but we do have guest suites to open one day, party rooms, theater, and the full fitness facility. But at the moment, as it is the pools, 
we will have that ready in about a week. Um, the endeavor for opening up your pools is definitely quite large. So do, um, do brace yourself and just go with the process and one day your doors will open as well. So I'd just like to introduce the video on how we are going to inform our members and create communication and comfort from the door to the pool when they enter their facility again. Welcome Absolute Residents. I am Tammy Steddings, your Live North Manager of Absolute Clubhouse. I want to welcome you back into the facility on behalf of myself and my staff from Live North, as well as the property management of shared facilities. We're very excited to reopen this clubhouse and to have you all back in part of our facility and serving you again. So what I'm gonna do in this promotional video today is take you step by step on how you will be able to re-enter your clubhouse. With all the government standards and policies in place, there's much new that you do need to know and rules in which you need to follow. So come with me and I'm gonna teach you how to get into your absolute clubhouse. Before we take another step, I've come to realize you can't just walk through the door. You need to register as a member on your website. So the first thing you're going to notice is we are open, but you must go online in order to reserve a spot to come into your facility. So I will be sending you an email shortly that is going to take you step by step on how to create a membership. And after you create yourself a membership, you are going to receive an app. Yes, Absolute Clubhouse now has an app, an online app, which will allow you to log on and you are going to reserve your spot to be able to enter your indoor and your outdoor pool. And just a side note, your app also allows you to pick workouts so that you can do workouts like yoga and Pilates for the comfort of your home. Note, to get into the facility, you must register and we have to check you in. If somebody is not registered, they cannot come into the facility. Our maximum capacity is 10 people. Come on in. So you'll notice a lot of new signage in your facility. As you will need in entering the club, to register when you are here. You have to sign in. Please keep your six feet apart and your social distancing of the stickers. Then at reception, you will be coming in to let us know who's checking in. Note that everyone from your unit who is here needs to have been online reserving a spot. So whether you're an adult, a child, even your baby, Everyone needs to be online and has to be accounted for as the 10 people for that one hour swim. After you've checked in with your fitness recreation concierge, you may now enter the changing rooms. So on route to the changing room, you're going to notice that there are sanitation stations available for you. So anytime you need to hand sanitize, there will be hand sanitizer around the facility. So we strongly recommend you hand sanitize. In entering the changing rooms, you'll notice that the doors are all going to be ajar. They'll all be open for you so that you don't have to touch knobs and high touch surfaces. So in the changing room itself, there's a few changes that you're going to have to note as a resident. Number one is that your shower facilities are closed. For the duration of COVID and the recommendation from the federal government, we are going to close these public showers so that you can go back to your unit to shower. Please take a cleansing shower prior to using the pool at your unit, and then also take a shower when you return back. The water will be off. Please do not take a shower at Absolute Clubhouse. As for your locker area, you may still come to change into your bathing suit. You'll notice that we've um, positioned the lockers to be exactly six feet apart for your safety and comfort. And we've twist tied the lockers to make sure that people don't stay too close when getting ready for their swim. We also recommend that you do come ready in your bathing suits instead of having to get changed because you are only here for one hour. So the more ready you are, the more time you spend in the pool. You'll notice all around your facility, sanitation stations. We have given you a disinfectant that kills 99% of all germs within one minute. So when you use a locker, when you use your chairs, anything that you've touched 
We ask that you wipe it down before you touch it and after you touch it. We will clean constantly for your safety, but you are also responsible for your own safety in these communal areas. Note during your visit, there are two facilities within the pool area that are still closed. Your steam rooms are closed because they do not allow for social distancing. They are not part of phase two's recovery plan. They will enter at phase three. Not only is it your steam room, but also your whirlpool is closed for the same reason. Once we get the go ahead from the provincial government, we will open your steam room and your whirlpool. So all to note in your pool area is please keep physical distancing from your residents that are not part of your immediate group and your immediate family. There are more sanitation stations for your convenience. The pool is very, very clean and it's safe to use during phase two of this recovery. And note that we've created pods for you and your family to sit and be able to enjoy the pool and the outdoor pool. If you can please remain within your pod, we would be very thankful. We have to take care of one another. With these liberties come responsibility. So make sure as a resident, you coming in, you come in if you're COVID free of symptoms, and then you remain distance to other people who are not part of your immediate group. On behalf of Lift North, shared facilities, we can't wait to see you. Welcome. Okay, that pretty well wraps it up. I think I got uh, Jody. We have one question come in. Maybe you, you're probably best to answer. Is the can you give direction eight directions as to the spacing in a fitness room? Is it only 36 square foot per person, no matter what activity they're doing? We're using about 140 square foot per person. Yes, that is correct. We're using about 140. Yeah. So. And that's, that's to kind of, if you have the space to do that, that is the recommendation um, to have 140 square foot. Great. And then the other question that came in, uh, Nabil, was how do we control that only those who register on the app are using the facility? And that goes back to operations, I think. That goes through the location code. So when you distribute out the URL for the login to make an account for the app, uh, we'll give you guys a specific location code, which is only meant for the residents. And once everybody has registered, we can actually print out a list of all the residents that have registered with that location code and unit numbers. And then you can go through it. If there's anybody that you don't recognize as part of being the unit, you can actually kick them off the apps that are unable to make bookings at the facility. Okay. And then the other uh, uh, question that came in was on the, uh, the disinfectant. Uh, if, if you're looking for the proper disinfectant, uh, we, we only distribute the, the proper DIN that the government sends out. If, if you're disinfectant, I was asked this question this morning by my favorite property manager. If your disinfectant doesn't have the proper DIN codes that are issued by Health Canada, don't use them because your health inspector are, are, are gonna tell you not to use them. Uh, if you go on our website under facilities, whatever, uh, there's a link right to them. Uh, we can put it on with this presentation when we link it, but it'll at least show you the products that we use and the DIN uh, numbers that are on there and I think the DIN actual DIN number is in the presentation if you click on this presentation afterwards but yeah there are uh, a set of, of numbers and registered products with the government um, good so I think that's it if you need any more information or you need any help with your facility please feel free to contact us we've got people across the country as you've heard from Jody we've got uh, very experienced operators across the country Obviously, you've got sales staff across the country as well uh, that we're here to help you with. Uh, if you need any assistance or any more information, we'll be more than glad to help you out. And thank you for spending this time for us. And on behalf of Live North, we'll see you soon. Cheers.